Hi, I'm Jordan from Kettner Creative. In this video, I want to help you answer the question, can I plug my microphone directly into a speaker? We get this question all the time from first-time event planners or people who are new to sound systems. Maybe they get a quote from us that has a microphone like this, a Shure SM58, it's a small 10-channel mixing console, and it has a small powered speaker like this. In this example, we have an eight-inch powered speaker. They're trying to figure out, do I really need this? Can I save a couple bucks? And can I plug my microphone directly into the speaker? So in this video, I'm going to discuss how you can do that, and then I'm going to discuss why I wouldn't do that. So to answer your question, yes, it's possible. If your microphone has an X, or if your speaker has an XLR input and your microphone has an XLR output, which most do, you can plug in your speaker to your microphone and it will work. Now, a couple things that you need to double check before it will work. One, it needs to be a powered speaker. Most speakers in 2020, like 95% of them are self-powered, which is what you need. If you're unsure if your speaker is powered or not, uh, the dead giveaway would be if there's a power cable going to it and some sort of uh, control or uh, usually if there's a fan on it, then you know it's a powered speaker because it has an amplifier that needs cooling. Uh, little things like that can help you figure out if it's a powered speaker, but generally it'll say, like this one does, DXR8 powered speaker. So there's another dead giveaway as to what you're dealing with. Now another thing you're going to want to look for on the back of your speaker is some way to confirm that you can do mic level. When you're dealing with an audio console, it sends it all the information at line level, which is much louder. So if you're trying to come from a mic, you need to toggle that switch to be mic level and that knows that it needs to add another preamp to get this microphone up to the volume that the amplifier needs in order to amplify it. So we plugged it in. We're on mic level now, you adjust the volume, and there, you can see that it works. So that's great, the speaker does work. Now why would I not do this? One, if you're renting a sound system, you're renting it generally for one reason. You want your content to be louder and you're trying to get the attention of your guests. We've all been to weddings where uh, the groomsman or somebody will walk up and do a speech and then you hear feedback and squealing and it's super distracting. When you plug your microphone directly into a speaker like this, you lose all types of control compared to a mixer. So what I would generally do if I'm running sound for a wedding is I would click on one of these buttons. There's a high pass filter. So a high pass filter would instantly get rid of a bunch of low frequencies and it helps uh, tidy up your voice and make it a little more crisp and intelligible for your guests. You generally don't need anything out of your voice under 80 hertz, so it gets rid of all that information and it makes the microphone sound much more clear. So that's one advantage of using a mixer. Two, uh, you can see here that there's only one microphone input on the back of the speaker. So maybe you have a set of speeches or something like that, but sometimes it's really nice to have two microphones. You can't do that in this situation. You really need a mixer like this that has, say, four microphone inputs. So you can uh, plug in four different microphones, you can adjust the volumes, and you can put in the high-pass filter to make sure that they all sound a little bit nicer, a little more crisp, and that really helps you uh, with your sounds. So you're not passing microphones back and forth all the time. Another thing that a mixer would give you is it would give you a basic EQ. So say you do have a problem frequency in your venue, the way that you prevent audio feedback and that squealing and that screeching sound is to try to identify this, the frequency that's bouncing around the room the most and turn that frequency down. So with a basic EQ like this, maybe you can turn your mids down a little bit and that allows you to get a little bit more uh, volume out of your microphone without it squealing in the room. This is a pretty basic EQ, it won't do a ton for you, but it does give you some basic tools to help defeat those uh, problem frequencies and offer more distraction-free audio for your audience and your guests. Now with a mixer like this as well, you also get these stereo inputs, and these stereo inputs are great for plugging in an iPod, a laptop, or anything like that. So if you are renting this for a kind of a do-it-yourself wedding where you want to set it all up, I would, like, you really can't do this without. There are some stereo inputs on some speakers like this. Uh, generally, you can't count on them. Um, and you get way more control, like I said, usually using them with an audio mixer. Another advantage of using an audio mixer is you can put it where you want it. 
Uh, the last thing you want to be doing at an event is be walking up to each speaker and adjusting the volume. This allows you to do it all from a central place. Sometimes you want to put the mixer right beside the podium so you can adjust it yourself while you're speaking. Sometimes you want the uh, mixer at the back of the room so somebody can be mixing sound and they're out of the way, none of the guests can see them. Again, it really comes down to you want your event to be as distraction free as possible. So this means uh, you don't want people running around trying to adjust volumes. You just want to be able to do it from one place and that's what the uh, mixer will do for you. So yes, you can plug your microphone directly into a speaker and that works really great for pop-up events, rallies, events that are on the move or say you just want like a, play an iPod into a speaker when you're camping or something like that. And that's great. You probably don't need a mixer. But if you have any type of a professional event with multiple inputs, uh, music and microphones or anything like that, I would really recommend it. It's pretty cheap to rent the mixer as well in the grand scheme of things. And I would recommend going that way. I hope this answered your question. If you have more questions like this, please leave a comment in the comment section below and we're going to keep making these videos as much as we can in the future. Thank you so much for watching.